Is that a problem? Wait, I might have another pan. It's fine. It's just a frozen disc pizza. Where's it going? Good morning. How's everyone doing? Do we show people what we're doing today? Frozen pizza! This has been my nightmare. The freezer and finding all of the frozen pizza for this shoot. So today we're trying all of the frozen pizza, all of the classic pizzas that started the frozen pizza revolution, which is like DiGiorno, Celeste, Totino's, Freshetta, Tony's. This has been impossible to find all these pizzas, and if one of them is missing today, please, please don't be mad at me. I really, really tried. I trekked through the snow. I had a bunch of delivery people come. There's frozen pizza on my balcony. This is what happens when you live in a apartment and you don't have enough freezer space. You put all the pizza out on your balcony in a snowstorm, and you just pray to God that it's still safe. Yeah, we're gonna try all the pizzas today. And I'm gonna take some lactate. We're gonna get going. Let's do it. I don't think there's enough lactate in the world for what we're about to do to my body, but I'm extremely excited. There's nothing worse that I could do in New York City than just buy a bunch of frozen pizza instead of going down the street to get the actual good stuff. Who can say no to pizza? It's like one of the great unifiers of the world. I'm using pepperoni pizza as our litmus test for all the pizzas today. Just basic cheese isn't quite enough. I wanna have something else to judge. So pepperoni it is. First one is Tony's Pizzeria. The cheese is looking a little emaciated, a little uh, looking that cheesy. Pizza one, bite one. It reminds me of the Lunchables pizza I've had earlier. I'm pretty sure that the pepperoni pizza is the best Lunchable. The dough actually feels like Lunchables dough, where it's still pretty doughy and not crispy. And the cheese, I just want it to be a little bit more melted. And we cooked this one for a while. Yeah, that's my review. Tastes like a Lunchables pizza. Very well seasoned, extremely salty. Up next, we have DiGiorno pizza. We have the rising crust, which is their, considered their original, and then the traditional crust, which is kind of ironic that the traditional crust is not the original. DiGiorno is actually the start of the rising crust pizza. So this was created in 1995. A lot of the other frozen pizzas that are the originals were actually created in the 60s. So this was actually a huge revolution. All the competitor brands were trying to get their recipe for their crust because they found a way to make it less doughy and less of that Lunchables pizza and more like actual dough. First things first, look how thick and chunky this dough is. I like that it has the burnt little cheese on here, the golden crust. It feels very heavy compared to the one we just had. Mm -hmm. This crust has a great chew to it. It has a golden. This is like the good drunk food pizza. I'm gonna dip it in some blue cheese because I think I like it that much. Mmm. Well, Matt, <laughs> you're giving me a what? quarter of the. I don't know what to do. Oh my god. Are you happy? I am. Okay. I like there to be a good amount of grease on my pizza. Like I, when you're eating drunk pizza, that's also what, what I'm grading frozen pizza on, is like drunk me, what would I want? Because I think sober me isn't gonna be making frozen pizza. This is delicious. I think it depends if you like pillowy crust, but I wanna try the traditional crust next. Mmm, mmm, oh, mmm, wait. All over your chin. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Where? I'm doing there. No, like it's all over here. Is it gone? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the sauce on this one. Oh, the other pizza. Mm -hmm. This is gonna happen all day. Oh God, they're done. What do I do? I didn't really anticipate what we were gonna do when the other pizzas were ready. Ugh. We'll worry about those later. Okay, what were we talking about? I have to taste the sauce again because I already forgot. Mm. It's super garlicky. It's honestly really salty, but it also has like that oregano and thyme to it. I like the sauce better and the cheese on this one, just the way it's melting all together and it's really greasy. But I like the crust better on the rising crust one. <laughs> Do what you will with that information. Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't like the crust on this one at all. Okay. I just had an extra bite of it. 
It's like um, dehydrated breadsticks. Mm. It's got that. It's got that going on. Mm -mm. Never mind. Never mind. This one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say to camera right now that there will be continuity issues within this video because I have to trade out the pans as we are shooting because I'm cooking more pizza. So if for some reason things look out of order because they're not in the same pan, it's not because we're lying to you, it's because I need the pan for the next pizza. <sighs> we're moving very, very haphazardly here today. Up next, we have freschetta. Freschetta? Freschetta. Freschetta pizza. We have it in naturally rising and thin crust. I was trying my hardest to get the natural, natural rising, thick crust, traditional, whatever you wanna call it, and the thin crust because actually, fun fact, thin crust is actually the most popular frozen pizza category. So, was trying to make sure I was showing that off as much as possible. Please bear with me if I don't have your favorite thin crust. You're a thin crust person over a regular crust person, yes? Yeah. I love the crunch it gets. Oh, do you like how it's holding so nicely? It's a defying gravity. That's adorable. Thank you. I don't like this one. I'm just gonna be honest with you. No sauce. The pepper is not meaty enough and not salty enough. And this sounds so stupid to say about frozen pizza, but it doesn't taste fresh. Hmm. For a brand name, Freshetta. All right, well, let's try the naturally rising crust. Maybe this is where they shine. I do have to say, this looks really beautiful. This was my cutting job that I did with scissors and it's the worst cutting job I've done in a long time. Looks saucy, it looks pretty good. Oh, I don't like the sauce. It tastes like if I tried to make tomato sauce. It tastes like tomato paste. I'm gonna take one more bite just to... Mmm. It's lacking grease, that is for sure. But the sauce tastes so pasty and very... It, it doesn't taste seasoned. It just tastes like really salty. This is really important to me. These are so important to me. <laughs> I didn't know what Elio's was until this shoot. And the moment I told Chelsea that we were doing frozen pizza, she was like, are you getting Elio's? You have to make sure you have it. And I was just like, okay. I went to a bunch of grocery stores to get all the pizza. And this was the one that was in all of the grocery stores. I don't know how I didn't see this one growing up. I'm not gonna lie, Chelsea. <laughs> the design, the, the beauties. I'm not confident with this choice of yours. For better or for worse, this is childhood and I, I will always have a special place in my heart for maybe the most artificial of artificial tasting pizzas. Okay. I love you. I just want you to know. <laughs> will she surprise you? I don't get it, but... No, you don't like it? This? <laughs> I'm having a hard time. It tastes how a garden smells to me. I'm thinking about like my dad grew up, he had a bunch of like tomatoes in his garden. It smells like when I walk through it. Can you not bark when I'm reviewing? Sheesh. I don't know, Chels. I'm trying to like, I think like bagel bites are better. Oh, I won't, I won't deny that. Okay. Does it taste like how you remember? Yep. Oh, <laughs> when you still <laughs> like it. You are a strange, strange woman. My favorite in this round is the DiGiorno Original Rising Crust Pepperoni Pizza. That for sure wins hands down. The rest of these, I don't know, the rest of these really, ugh. So I'm excited for the next round. We have more original pizza to go, which is insane, but there are just so many classic ones before we can get to all the other crazy ones. Um, so we're gonna clean this up and package it up and get to the next round. Great round. Madame. If the camera looks shaky after this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> we are still in classic round. Um, there's just so many different classic pizzas and actually one of the classics I couldn't even get. It was um, Tombstone, the brand Tombstone. I looked everywhere for it, tried to get it delivered here multiple times and they kept canceling it on me. So I don't know, maybe Tombstone Pizza is the best because it's the only one that's sold out. We will never, ever know. We have a Newman's Own Thin Crust Pepperoni Pizza. 
this really does look beautiful. Like the cheese and the pepperoni, I hope it looks as vibrant as it does in real life, like on camera, but it looks really pretty. Mmm. Oh, that's weird. Huh. I don't know why I was about to say that the sauce tastes like grapes. Don't say that, Julia. The thin crust could be thinner. It still has a little bit of a doughiness to it. The pepperoni is sweet. It's not spicy. That sauce is interesting. There's something going on there. Tomato paste, olive oil, red, ah, red wine vinegar in it. Hmm. That might be what it is. Cause I was saying like grapey, I almost was gonna say wine flavor. <laughs> Just reviewing pizzas, doing my job. Up next is the Red Baron pizza, which by the way, this man is extremely attractive on the box. I looked up old ads of Red Baron because that's what I do in my free time. And oh my God, they were like very sexual, like sexualizing pizza commercials, but I was oddly into it, so. Craig's not a weirdo. He just marches to a different drummer. I don't know. All to say, this man is attractive. Oh wait, would you say he was a the male Amelia Earhart. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I'll say about the Red Baron pizza is that it has that really good greasy oil on it that you get at a pizza shop. We haven't actually seen that too often, so that gives me very high hopes. Mm -hmm. This is a very solid pepperoni pizza. There's a little bit of grease. Pizza grease is the best lip gloss. Right amount of doughiness, like the chew, to it. I like the amount of cheese on it, the cheese ratio, the sauce ratio is all, it's all playing together nicely. A little bit of a spice. I wonder if that's from the pepperoni. Mm, yep. The pepperoni has just a little bit of a kick to it. Love Red Baron. Wow, Ooh. sexy man. Lives up to his name. What's next? <laughs> we have Wegmans and we have Target. I am really excited about the Wegmans pizza. This one looks Really similar actually to the DiGiorno one that we had. It has that really great like cheesiness going on, thick crust, it also is heavy. This is also a quarter of the pizza, so it should be cut in half, but like, whew, I'm like working out trying to eat it. I'm tasting like anchovy. What? I don't know what's wrong with me. Interesting pepperoni choice, huh? It's something with the pepperoni, it's a little like seafoody or something. I don't know, I'm getting a weird flavor in there. Oh, it has celery juice in it. Mmm. I love just how thick this dough is. If you're gonna do a really good frozen pizza dough, Wegmans is really on board with it. I do think the DiGiorno one is a little bit better though. This pizza is okay looking. Like if I was on a dating app and saw it, I would have to like scroll down and like see if it has like a good personality or something. <laughs> like on its own, I'm like, I don't know. But maybe it's redeeming in other ways. What's with these pizzas? Why are they so like off? Just because you're a thin crisp pizza doesn't mean that you can't have sauce. It's like they barely put sauce on this and it's very much bothering my soul. And then there's barely any cheese on it. It, you need to add more of one of them. You can't go light on both. Now we have Celeste pizza. Celeste is actually one of the very first pizzas to make it on the market ever. This lady here, she's from Chicago and she created the Celeste pizza. She ended up selling it to like Pillsbury Quaker, Quaker, Pillsbury, that company. So she's no longer affiliated with it, but this was her pizza. Am I, how do I? Do I just pick it up and eat it? Yeah. Chelsea would like to let everyone know that this is a very large bagel bite. <laughs> Pepperonis, the cubes of it are honestly kind of promising. I hope it's a little trashy. It's such fake trashy pizza that I'm kind of a, in love with it. It's not even trying to be real pizza. Mm, I would not serve this to anyone. <laughs> Last one of round two is Screamin' Sicilian Pizza. Um, and it also comes with, which also, does this mean this goes up your nose? It came with the box. They want you to stick this up your nose. I think. That's really gross. Do it. 
It really hurts. Oh God, no, sorry. I have to wash my hands now. You want your kids to take a fake paper mustache and shove it up their nose and then eat your pizza? Okay. Hmm. This is very bold and flavorful. Mmm. This is super buttery though. Like the rest of them, I haven't had any butter feeling yet, but this one, mm-hmm, feels really rich. The box does give me feelings that it's gonna be like hipster feeling to it. Does that seem right? That makes this round super easy to judge. That's Screaming Sicilian is the winner from this round. This gives me hopes. This pizza here is glimmer of hope for the next round. I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. Okay. <laughs> I'm breathing and it's like there, there's not a place for the air to go. I know that your stomach and lungs aren't connected, but they feel connected right now. We are in the specialty pizza round, which means it can honestly mean anything. It can mean cauliflower pizza, CPK barbecue pizza. It's just the pizzas that didn't make sense to go in any other round. So I just made it around. I'm actually very excited for this one because besides CPK, I really haven't had, like I haven't had the cauliflower and the gluten-free ones. And considering I am lactose intolerant and I have IBS, I should be eating these. So it's good to know what's out there. Okay, we're gonna start with this deliciously dairy-free pizza. It's gluten-free. Oh God, okay, it's gluten-free and meatless. And it says new and improved, which means it was not good at one point. Chelsea said when we were shooting the beauties of this that it looked a little gray. And that is now stuck in my mind about it. Dairy-free, meatless. It looks like a pizza, just the meat looks a little brown. Oh, it does not smell like pizza. Huh. huh. It's all melting together like glue in my mouth. Very gritty. No, not gritty, um, grainy. Grainy, gritty meat. Oh, it stuck my tooth. It's very gluey cheese pizza. Very interesting. Okay, let's look past the texture. You have to really look past the texture. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something really nice to say about it. You need to dress this pizza up, like put some red pepper flakes on it. It's one of those things where if you are someone who needs to be gluten-free and dairy-free and all these things, this is technically not allowed to happen with this pizza. Blue cheese and this do not go together. I just think that's hard when, if like that's your diet that you have to be, that you're stuck on and you really want pizza. Everyone wants pizza. And it's hard when it just doesn't live up to the hype of regular pizza. Um, we're gonna dip it in some blue cheese. Blue cheese makes everything better. Up next is our Call of Power pizza. Your favorite vegetable, margarita pizza. Crust made with real cauliflower. Just by looks, it's a little, I would need to find another word besides emaciated, but it, it, there's not much sauce on there. It looks more like a flatbread almost. You know, I do like all the little pieces of tomato on there. I've had really good cauliflower pizza. You just have to know that you can't compare regular pizza and cauliflower together. You just have to see them as different things. I'm ready. Oh, the tomatoes are diced on top of here, which actually makes them a little juicy. So when you're biting into it, it's like this like burst, a slight burst almost of fresh tomato, which makes it very fruity instead of savory. And cauliflower is, it's kind of like a sweet pizza for me. This one also needs to be dressed up. This one's very plain. I honestly don't think there's any seasoning on this. And it claims it has granulated garlic and onion in here and a little bit of basil. I don't know, this is very light-handed. For me, I want like more of bodaciousness of the sauce and I want it to be savory. We need to have something good in our lives. We need something that's gonna make us happy. Those two pieces were kind of like a Debbie Downer to this round. We're doing Amy's Pizza. Um, I tried my hardest to find a pepperoni pizza. It does exist, but I couldn't, I just couldn't get it. So I did a margarita and a spinach. Neither of them are thin crust. I really tried, but I wanted to show Amy's Pizza because so many of you guys requested Amy's Pizza. We're doing the margarita first, which Chelsea wants me to make sure that I point out that these look like little marshmallows on top. <laughs> they look like the little jet puffed mini ones that you get for hot cocoa. But to me, that almost makes me feel like it's more real. I really do like that it's those thick pieces of mozzarella on there. This should, this should taste delicious. Mm. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. This could be served as an appetizer at like a chain restaurant. Lots of, lots of basil on there. Mm. Now this one tastes super fresh and the tomatoes are making it fruity, which I kind of had a problem with with the last pizza. Because of all the basil, it's really like, it's like a kumbaya moment for this pizza. The crust is a little, hmm, it's a little sad, but the actual flavor, this one has like, I think this one has the most flavor out of all the ones we've had so far. Up next, we have Amy's pizza with spinach. Now, I want this to taste like a spinach dip. I don't know if it's going to. On its own, it looks kind of nutty for some reason to me. It looks like it's like a pesto. It smells like spinach dip. I don't think this one looks that beautiful, but I love this as a little bit of a change up. The spinach, the feta, no tomatoes, or is there a tomato? Well, I guess a little bit of tomatoes in here, but it's not like taking over the dish. I do have to say that the box shows it being really cheesy. In actuality, I don't know how cheesy it is. I love this one as well. Last but not least, we have CPK, which I have actually been able to go into the restaurant pre-COVID times and try all of their pizzas. So I know I love their barbecue. I don't remember if I like their cheese. I think I liked it. I don't remember if it was my favorite favorite, but very interested to try these at-home versions um, with a thin crust. So let's start with the four cheese. Fontina, hickory smoked gouda, two types of mozzarella cheese. By looks, looks super, super cheesy. Looks a little, I, I burnt it just a little bit, but I think that makes it taste better. A little stiff, but that's fine. All that cheese in there, and you don't really taste much of it. I was really hoping I'd taste a bunch of gouda. Crap, the delivery for the other pizza. I really like your sauce. I felt like they were pizza, like pizza colored, right? Four cheese. Gets like three stars. That's a way of ending it. This one, mm, please be delicious. Hmm. So this is a little, the crust is a little cardboard-like. It's a lot cardboard-like. It's, you know, there's no flimsiness to it. I'm gonna look past it. The flavor is amazing. It is such a strong flavor. You have the tangy barbecue, but you have the red onion and you have like this like, sweetness from the chicken, and then you also have cilantro on there, which, you know, when you're getting it frozen, it's not gonna look as pretty, but still there, still delicious. Mm. To me, this isn't a drunk pizza, though. If you were having your friends over and you wanted to have pizza and you didn't wanna make it yourself, this is a great, great option. I love this one. From this round, definitely the barbecue chicken. From the dietary situation, <laughs> Maybe the cauliflower one. I, I think that the cauliflower with a different topping, not margarita, if they had like a supreme pizza or just something that had a little bit more oomph to it, I think you would really enjoy it. On its own, it's okay, it's fine. Needs, needs a little help. I can't believe we are going to the last round and it's kind of a bonus round. Basically, when I was telling Chelsea about frozen pizza, she had this like meltdown about, what was it, bagel bites? Yeah. Basically she was like, are you gonna have bagel bites? And I said, no, because bagel bites aren't frozen pizza. They are an entirely <laughs> different category, which I still stand by. And she was like, I can't do that. And so I got pizza rolls and some other ones that are like pizza products, but not frozen pizza. But they also are my favorite. Like I love bagel. Pizza bagels, bagel bites. Pizza bagel bites. Pizza bagel bites, like, and, and pizza rolls. On a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. This is not an ad for them. Pizza! When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. Is it that time o'clock? It's been that time o'clock, baby. I am incredibly excited for this round because we have bagel bites, which I'm extremely, and Chelsea's also extremely excited about. So we did. A few baked and then a few microwaved because microwaved is really how you eat them. Look at this dish. <laughs> this is how you remember it though, right? Like yeah. all messy and like vomiting everywhere. And then like this is like whoever had the time to preheat their oven and bake them. I guess we should try both. I know I'm gonna like the microwave one better because it's kind of like chewy and soggy and moist. And then these ones are gonna be like. <laughs> 
What's funny is they actually do have a bagel butt on them. Yeah. It's fine. Mmm. It's so sweet. Wait, you have to have one. Th these are your, this is your childhood, right? Yes. Did you used to have these like at parties or like after school? What was the, what was the? I would definitely eat an entire box of bagel bites after school. Like every day. It's actually not that bad. For four of them, it's 180 calories, so. Yeah, so I would, I'd do, I would eat the whole box. Yeah, 420, <laughs> Wow, they did that on purpose. Um, <laughs> Okay, the baked ones I think are gonna taste better because it gives them a little bit more substance because they're not getting super, super soggy in the microwave, but, oh, these are hot, okay. Ooh, and they're squishy, yes. But the cheese, look how better, like how melty it is. Where this one yeah. doesn't, it doesn't really melt when it's in the oven. No, please don't burn the roof of your mouth. It's, that's what this is though. Mmm, look how, can you see how doughy that is? It's like a deconstructed Hot Pocket. Mmm, pure trash. Flavor profile is sweet, salty, soggy. <laughs> the three S's in life. We have to move on. Wait, I have fun facts for this round. Totino's, let me make sure I have it right. The first pizzas on the market in 1962 made in Minnesota by a beautiful woman named Rose? Rosa. How can I not remember her name? Rose Totino. There's actually, maybe we can find some photos and pull them because I found them online. But it's like this really sweet old lady being like, eat my pizza. Totino's literally took over the market. And this was before like the really great DiGiorno like rising crust. Like this is the original, well, this might be a little modified nowadays, but this was pretty much like the start of the frozen pizza era was Totino's. Okay, we have pepperoni and combination. I like it's called combination. Like they didn't even, they're like, ah, it's combination. Does anyone else use scissors to cut their pizza? No. Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> I, I'm really not the only one who does it. My mom does it. Mm. Mm. Huh. When you bite down into it, your teeth don't, all the, don't go all the way through. It's like a pause. You have to kind of yank it. Oh, that's cardboard. <laughs> if we've had any cardboard pizza of the day, this is it. Out of all the ones I've had today. This has some cheddar cheese on it, which is um interesting for a pizza. You know what this looks like? Um, when you were like school lunches, right? Did you ever like the oh, school no. pizza? It kind of has that similar shape to it. I mean, it has some good little layers in there. You got the dough and you can see the cheese. It looks like it could be promising, but it's gonna be the same thing. Cause this is just, this is the combination one. There's that bite. It's this bite that you go into and it's just like, you wanna keep going and it stops you. It's like, yeah, like the sausage one, the combination, which has sausage in it, is a little bit better because it does have that little bit of fat and savory porkiness going on compared to just the pepperoni. I think it's a weird choice to put cheddar cheese on this or whatever cheese imitation cheese this is. Our last thing, our very last thing, are these pizza rolls. We got them in pepperoni and combination. And of course we can't tell which one's which, which was always fun. A really fun fact about these is that the creator of these, it was in the 1950s, oh, got it. What's his name? Gino Paolucci created these by using his egg roll maker and turning them into pizza roll makers. Yeah, that's all I had for that one. These pale, pale little squares. Oh, I don't know why I tried to do that. That's a combination one. Mm -hmm. I taste, it tastes like sweet sausage. The one thing about pizza rolls that is so annoying is that they usually are just so flaming hot, burning your mouth that you try to bite part of it off to release, you know, the heat, but then it just squirts everywhere. Chelsea tried to eat one <laughs> earlier and it just like, like right out of her mouth. Um, yeah. If you've never had a pizza roll, you should have one. I think between pizza rolls and bagel bites, which is divisive, I know, Pizza rolls are better than bagel bites. <gasps> yeah, I know, you're gonna do that. Pizza rolls are better than bagel bites. They are so snackable. You just sit there and, and they taste better microwaved. 
Bagel bites don't taste good microwaved. Pizza rolls taste good baked or microwaved. Bagel bites are only good when they're in the oven because when they're microwaved, they get all sad looking. I mean, yeah, the cheese gets meltier, but. I still like it. I know. I, I mean, I like them both. I'm not trying to like say these suck, but okay. Let me know in the comments down below if you want more pizza. Um, as you know, I had a lot of pizza that I picked up and got delivered and I have still a bunch of leftovers in my freezer. Do not worry, I'm actually able to, one, keep some of these for me and my roommate, and two, we have a lovely church down the street that I donate my food to because they can take food when I haven't already eaten it, when it's like fully in there, they can take it. Is that a full sentence? I don't know. I guess Chelsea needs to eat the rest of the bagel bites and I'll eat the rest of the pizza rolls. Fine. We'll have a little dinner date before we go. Yeah. Oh, so, so good. I'm so full. I could eat more of these. God bless. Mm.